All right, today is day three. Spent the first day tearing off, spent yesterday tearing off roof and doing a lot of framing. Today, I think the wind should be calm enough. It's a little breezy, but not bad, but we should be able to start putting steel up. So what we're gonna do now is get the laser set up. We're gonna check grade to make sure that our base trim is perfect. Even though the concrete wall's not going anywhere, we can't change the height of the building we can change at least the way it looks. So if it looks straight, if it looks level, then that's really what matters. So we're gonna get this thing started off with a perfect base trim line, and then we're gonna start installing our windows, our steel, we'll get this roof steel on, and before we tear off the other side, we wanna do that so we've got good strength. So I think we're prepped to get this side done, the roof done, our garage door is almost finished framed out, which means we can trim that out, should go a little bit quicker now that we've got mainly the hard stuff done. So let's get into it. We found the lowest point on this building. That way we can make sure that that's where our base trim starts because we've only got this inch and a half uh, bottom plate here. And that's what we're gonna have to attach not only our base trim to, but also that's where we will be screwing our, uh, our bottom steel in. So we don't wanna be too high on this trim. You guys, don't judge me, all right? So these windows I bought six, seven years ago? Probably, yeah. They came with a Hydra Swing door. If you don't know what that is, it's one of those big monster doors that you see on like airport hangers that the whole thing just goes up, like uh, it swings open at the top. And these windows came with that door. We didn't want to use them because we wanted to match all the other windows on the building. So I've been sitting on these nice aluminum windows forever. My dad said, hey, we got to redo this building. I wanted to add a couple windows. And I thought, hey, this is the right time to get rid of those windows that I've been sitting on. So they're actually nice, but they're kind of dirty. There's a bunch of bird crap because they've been sitting in my old barn. But I'm glad I can finally get rid of them. And they're a little bit different than we're used to because they have a built-in J channel. So what we'll do is we'll still probably run our J channel around them. This is like an inch and a half J channel, and that's too big in my opinion. If you put red steel in here, it's just gonna look like crap. By reducing the J channel to an inch J channel, I think it will look a lot better. You should be able to slide it right in. Just watch the bottom trim. Right there. Yep, go ahead. Push it in, but keep the bottom off. Keep the bottom off. I'm trying. Okay, watch your... Oh. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Go back. It's it caught on something. So there's your... Yeah, there's a freaking nail right there. Okay. When the wind dies down, it ain't too bad. Starting to get a little warm, man. So, because this is already built in J, I'm gonna have to slide it in. So, since this has a top J channel built in, it's a little bit tricky because we can't just put our steel on, then slide our J. So, I'm actually gonna put the J in, and then Greg is gonna cut to my J with his notch and we'll tuck it all in after the fact. A little bit cumbersome, not ideal, not the way we like to do it, but end result will be the same. All right. All right. Here, here, here. Here's one for you. Okay. 
Okay, I'm I'm pretty good anytime. Now, I'm typically a believer of Wayne's coat. You guys have probably noticed that we've always done Wayne's coat on like every building. In fact, I don't think we've ever not done Wayne's coat on a building that you guys have seen. This application, it would have required a new framing line and with it all being the same color, it just wasn't worth it. Uh, it would have been really close to these window heights and just really a mess detail wise. So we just opted to leave it out and we're running a one piece steel. It makes it easier for Greg and I though. So it's also very important and it's important all the time, but especially with older buildings, you don't want to overdrive your screw because over time wood can start to cup and twist. And if you overdrive your screw, it can pucker the metal where that screw is located because maybe the lumber is not perfectly flat. And when you suck that screw in, it could put a, uh, like an oil can into the sheet. So what we always do is try to keep the sheet nice and snug to the wall. Watch that washer just slightly compress and that's it, man. You don't have to worry about wind driven rain or leaks on a wall like you do on a roof. And you definitely want to be nice and snug, but make sure that it looks good. And quite frankly, red is the worst. I don't know why, but red looks the worst when it's not done very well. Okay, hold on. This is usually when I turn YouTube off so they don't see our secret, but I'm gonna let them in. I'm gonna let them in, dude. They've been good to me. All right, what do we got here? Yeah, we're good there. Well, Greg's wrapping up the last couple sheets on the wall. I'm trying to get this roof prepped. And this may look a little bit different. It's not what we normally use, but with this taller subfascia, it kind of helps cover up the trim that goes here. Otherwise, you know, it, it doesn't, the trim doesn't make it up all the way. Um, and the gutter will get tucked right up underneath here. So it actually works out pretty good. Okay, I dropped my tape measure, man. These are foam closure strips, so you can see the pattern of the steel, and that will help close off those little ribs so bugs and birds and whatever can't make it in there, bees, whatever, wind-driven rain, snow, all those good things, this is to block that and seal off this eave line. I think that doesn't look too bad. Nice red and white classic colors. And our roof is actually gonna be black. So going away from just a white roof on a red walled barn, I think it looks good. We've done this a few times and uh, that's what my parents wanted to go with. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and get this set up now and start running this black roof out as we make our way down. Old building, we're gonna do the best we can, but we're not gonna get it perfect. Walls are plumb. The framing could be off, you know? Yeah. So. Could be a lot of factors. Yep. All right, dude, we are 231 and three quarters. So we're an eighth of an inch. That's plenty good. I take it ahead just a little bit. Yo, too much. Yep. I'm not really quite sure what the framer was doing on this original building, but it's definitely a little bit weird because purlins are all over the place. They like staggered them. They didn't consistently lap them. So our screw lines are gonna be all sorts of messed up. And we've got our framing that we've added for extra support on some of the bad purlins. So man, the birds are gonna have a field day with this one, Greg. We're gonna get critiqued. Where's Zach when you need him?
All right, today is the start of day four. We just got done tearing off this other side of roof and uh, it came off pretty good. The nails were not holding that well. So definitely it was time to do this because I don't think it would have lasted much longer. But the good news is all of the major demo is done. So we've still got a little bit of repair work to do. We've got fascia and soffits to put on and uh, I think a couple of boards to replace. And then over here, we've got a door we're gonna frame in as well as one more window to frame in. And then it'll be back to just full finishes. So uh, we're gonna jump right in on this. Of course, it's breezy again. It's not that warm. I feel like I'm complaining at this point. Good Lord, dude. This is the worst jag I've ever experienced. Do you believe that? And when I say experience, I mean like per personally did. I've seen worse. I'm curious to see what it looks like underneath. I hope the world doesn't judge us for this. Good Lord, this gives me anxiety, bro. Take her back. Yeah. Kicker back, I guess. Too much. Okay. See, this is what happens when you assume this old building had a two inch difference from the eave to the peak on the length of the building. So when we got to this end, um, we only laid out the bottom and it wasn't gonna work with our steel. So we actually had to cut the top down and adjust our gable trim in. Not the biggest deal, but it would have been nice to have caught it beforehand. What kind of archaic job site are we on? That we're running soffit. I'm, I'm getting trusted. I'm running soffit fascia off of a sketchy ladder. No, mine, mine wasn't. This was, uh, this was a birthday gift when I started my business. Uh, back in 2007. 2007. Sorry for that ladder there, man. I don't know why you left it there. I don't know why you left it there, but. Come on, man. That's why that ladder was left for you, dude. Good, buddy. This here was a really bad section of the concrete. I think it was pinned to the wall and on the inside, it cracked and just dropped pretty substantial. So my dad came in, busted all the garbage out, put a new threshold in with concrete, and then this will all get filled in later. So we're gonna frame in a new door. This was just an opening. And believe it or not, because we did take time to plumb up the corners, this, uh, this is plumb. So what I'll do is I'll use this as my starting point and I'll frame this way. And then over here, this is not connected to anything. We'll get a new piece of uh, sill plate here and get it all framed back up for a door. Bro, that is crazy. Greg, look at this. That's crazy. This is where 60 penny nails, I'm assuming we're coming through. What? Look at that, the oxidation. Yo, look at this guys. I just pulled this 
board off the building, cut it up because I needed it, and I just cut right through the old nails. These were 60 penny nails. What's left of them? Look at that. The oxidation, the rust. You know, this, this does a pretty decent job. I shouldn't give DeWalt such a hard time. They really have a great stapler, Craig. The nice thing about using a trim like this, I don't know if that's gonna focus in, but it's basically a Z flash. Not a typical base is because when the concrete has some irregularities and sticks out past your sill or grade board, you can drop this down a little where you have to and it's not gonna be affected, or when you raise it up, it's still not gonna be a big deal. So that's why I like to use this whenever we do a foundation. I don't like to use standard base trim. So we're pushing pretty hard here to get this side done. Uh, it's Friday, we're gonna try and get out of here a little bit early. We know that we're not gonna get everything done here on day number five. We're gonna have to come back for a sixth day. Five was my goal. It happens, that's just the way it goes. We're gonna save this front end and any sort of trim details to finish up Monday and we'll get everything cleaned up. Back, 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 yep. Come on, get it, man. Nice work, nice work. Anytime. All right, cool, cool. Okay, got it. Come on, dude. Easy. Are you going in? Mm, I love
What do you see down there, Grigo? Is it coming my way? Okay, do what you want. I want it right there. Okay. You know, so here's a secret for you. When you're remodeling an old building like this, an old house, whatever it is, the lines, the edges, these trim details, those are the things that people see. So if these are straight, the building will look straight. If your walls have a little bit of bow in them, if they're not perfectly straight, you don't really see that because your eye isn't attracted to the middle of a wall. These right here, they got to be good. Our corner trims, those got to look good. So all those lines on the edges that define the perimeters are what people see. So just think about that. If you're going to remodel, spend your time uh, on these trim details, the middles of the walls, you're just never going to see, and it's probably not worth fighting sometimes. Good to go when you are. Oh, what am I catching on? Oh, right here. Why is it? Okay, there we go. it man wait where is it oh yeah right here mm -hmm. dude it's like it never happened it didn't what are you talking about man that's the one thing you got to watch out for with these old buildings you got to watch out for nails that are in the material the wood because you didn't put them there you don't know they're there until you put your steel on so we had a nail popping out a nail <laughs> we had one of them nails Beautiful. Well, Greg and I are out of here, man. This was a good project. It was a nice filler project here in the spring as things are starting to get ready for the full on building season. And we've got a lot coming. Uh, I don't know when this video is gonna actually air, but hopefully you guys stick around for some of these future builds. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this little remodel job. It was a 22 by 38 hog building at one point. And we obviously had to redo all the exterior because it was in some disrepair from a major windstorm. This was for my parents. I'm hoping that maybe my dad uses this building for a shop or something in the future. And that'll be a pretty good use for it because now that it's on that foundation wall, or I should say it's always been on that foundation wall, but we've got a nice new exterior. Man, this building is going to last a long time. And I think it looks great. I always say you can't polish a turd, but you can put lipstick on a pig. And uh, I think this is a great example of that because even though we couldn't make new of old, we were able to make it look pretty good and hopefully it's gonna last a long time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really greatly appreciate you hitting that thumbs up. Maybe drop a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite part of this building or if, uh, if you're gonna try to tackle a remodel job like this and hopefully this video helps you. But if nothing else, maybe hit that subscribe button and hang out for the future videos because we got a lot coming and hopefully you guys come along for the ride. So we'll catch you later. I'm gonna get out of here.